Mr. Duke, I'm so sorry we didn't get to spend more one-on-one -on -one time together. Well, that was a, was a tragedy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 true story films that actually show the craziest part. The minute I was born, every breath I've taken, every action has been leading me to this crack on the outside. surface. For this list, we'll be looking at various movies that showed the craziest and most unbelievable part of the true story it's based on. There will be a few spoilers for these movies, and we guess history too. Which of these stories did you find the most unbelievable? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Dog Day Afternoon One of Al Pacino's finest movies. Dog Day Afternoon tells the true story of friends Sal Naturali and John Wodovich, who was renamed Sonny Wartzik for the movie. Is there any special country you want to go to? Wyoming. No Wyoming. This not a country. These inexperienced crooks decide to rob a bank so that Sonny can pay for his partner's gender affirmation surgery. The story culminates with the crooks attempting an elaborate airplane getaway, but Sal is shot and killed and Sonny is arrested. <laughs> It seems like a dramatized Hollywood ending, but no, it actually happened. While a jet was getting ready on the tarmac of JFK, Naturali was shot in the chest by the limo driver, who was actually an undercover FBI agent. And in the meantime, the agent had a chance to shoot him, and when one was shot, the other immediately gave up. Wodovich immediately surrendered and was sentenced to 20 years in prison, serving five. Number 9. The Wolf of Wall Street when it comes to the Wolf of Wall Street, there is one image that everyone remembers. Jordan Belfort, high on quaaludes, attempting to enter his car. <laughs> While Jordan thinks he made it home okay, he actually hit numerous objects on the way and totaled his beautiful Lamborghini. The only false thing about this story is the Lambo. In real life, it was a Mercedes. Wow. Maybe I hadn't made it home okay. Otherwise, the scene is 100% accurate. Belfort repeatedly crashed his Mercedes but didn't remember doing so. In fact, the story is even worse in real life as Belfort sent a woman to the hospital after colliding with her car. You guess if I, was, if I had shame back then, yes. Now, no, I'm not going to live my life in shame. I think it's a toxic emotion. Belfort even taught Leonardo DiCaprio how to accurately writhe on the ground, having personally been in that situation before. Number 8. The Impossible This disaster film stars Naomi Watts as Maria Bennett. She and her family are vacationing in Thailand when their resort is slammed by the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Maria is seriously injured in the disaster and the family is separated. Following lots of tension and worry, Maria, her husband, and their three children are all reunited at a local hospital. What? It seems like a kitschy and unrealistic happy ending slapped onto a disaster film, but it actually happened to the Bellon family. Maria Bellon nearly died in the tsunami, but she survived and was miraculously reunited with her family in the hospital. A near impossible feat that gave the movie its title. Are you back? Yes. Are you back? The hospital scenes were even filmed in the real hospital. It was good. It was good revisiting, especially the hospital, and thank giving thanks to, to so much people that we, we all to, to thank. Number 7. Black Klansman Spike Lee's greatest film in years, Black Klansman tells the true story of Ron Stallworth, a police officer who infiltrates the KKK. Hello, this is Ron Stallworth calling. I saw your advertisement in the Colorado Springs Gazette. I'm interested in receiving some reading materials from you. Much of the movie's story is fictional, including the bomb plot against the student union, but what is true is that Stallworth actually talked to and eventually met David Duke. Duke was once the Grand Wizard of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, serving between 1974 and 1980. It's beautiful here, sir. God's country. Well, that's what I hear, Ron. I look forward to meeting you, and, uh... We'll be talking real soon. Stallworth's investigation took place between 78 and 79. And I used the language of hate in order to gain his uh, confidence and to let him see me as one of them. 
And uh, from the moment I said those words, he was sold that Ron Stallworth was a fellow white supremacist. Starworth's conversations with Duke may seem fabricated for the movie, but he did indeed speak to the Grand Wizard about his membership, and at one point even took a photo with him. Nobody's gonna believe me when I tell them that I was your personal bodyguard today. Care to take a Polaroid with me? Number 6. The Imitation Game One never knows how much historical accuracy they will receive in a biopic. While the imitation game certainly contains its fabrications, its ending is devastatingly real. You, you got what you wanted, didn't you? A work, husband, normal life. Alan Turing was indeed convicted of gross indecency and underwent both chemical castration and hormone therapy. His body became physically weaker, he was rendered impotent, and he eventually developed breasts. Am I a war hero? Am I a criminal? I can't touch you. His friends reported that the changes upset Turing, but he continued working in mathematical biology. Shortly after his castration, Turing was found dead. The world is an infinitely better place, precisely because you weren't. Do you really think that? His death remained shrouded in mystery and ambiguity, but the leading theory is that Turing took his own life. Number five, I, Tanya. The story of Tanya Harding is one of the most fascinating in all of sports. It was people's impression of me. Um, that I'm a real person. To help Harding's chances at the upcoming Winter Olympics, Harding's ex-husband planned to sabotage the career of rival Nancy Kerrigan. He hired a man named Shane Stant to attack Kerrigan, and on January 6, 1994, Stant smacked Kerrigan's thigh with a baton. <laughs> Luckily, Kerrigan was not seriously hurt, and she went on to compete at the Olympics. This fascinating incident is played out in I, Tanya, even though it's told through a warped and seemingly misleading lens. She goes out and gives a beautiful skate. I never said different. She wins a friggin' silver medal. The movie garnered some criticism for its sympathetic portrayal of Harding, a portrayal that various historians and biographers don't believe was warranted. Number four. Snowden. The climax of Oliver Stone's Snowden plays out much like an espionage thriller. Snowden is left intensely paranoid about his leaks and is smuggled out of Hong Kong with the help of journalists and a documentary filmmaker. I've met a lot of astonishing people in my life, but you. <laughs> okay, laddie, off you go. The American government then revokes his passport, leaving Snowden stranded in Moscow. This excitement seems fabricated for a Hollywood ending, but it is 100% rooted in reality. Well, I never intended to come here. You know, uh, my passport was revoked en route to Latin America. So when people say, why are you in Russia? I say, ask the State Department. Snowden's dramatic escape from Hong Kong can be watched in the documentary Citizen Four, which was directed by Laura Poitras. Poitras is portrayed by Melissa Leo in the film. Sure. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a great idea. The real Snowden was stranded in Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport, and he was eventually granted permanent residence in Russia. Is your life on a daily basis? Do you work? Uh, are you paying rent? <laughs> yeah, of course I'm paying rent. It's the one thing none of us can escape from. Number three, The Revenant. The story of Hugh Glass is a tricky one. Glass himself never corroborated his famous story, and it began as a piece in a literary magazine. If it is real, then it is likely exaggerated and blown into legend. True, you killed an officer. I just killed a man who's trying to kill my son. Either way, it's fascinating. While fur trapping in South Dakota with General William Ashley, Glass was attacked by a grizzly bear. <laughs> Like the movie, Glass was horrifically injured in the attack, but somehow managed to survive. The grievously injured Glass was eventually abandoned by his fellow trappers and left for dead. We'll be dead inside an hour. Mm. Yeah, we all will be if you don't quit waiting like that. He then traveled more than 200 miles while suffering from life-threatening injuries and successfully arrived at Fort Kiowa, having survived entirely on roots and wild berries. Number 2. 127 Hours 
Danny Boyle's 127 Hours plays out like many fictional survival stories. A boastful man gets himself trapped, almost dies, and is forced to take some drastic measures in order to save himself. Lesson, don't buy the cheap made in China multi-tool. In this case, the extravagant story is completely real. Outdoorsman Aaron Ralston got himself trapped in Utah's Blue John Canyon and spent five days starving, dehydrating, and slowly losing both his mind and body. You didn't tell anyone where you were going. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely correct. Anyone? He was eventually forced to extricate himself with a dull Swiss army knife, and this process is shown in excruciating detail in Boyle's film. I couldn't get the, the knife to sink in, and so I switched over and I, I pulled out the smaller blade, and with the smaller blade then I actually started the, the amputation. The smaller one was still a little more sharp. After painfully operating on his arm, Ralston rappelled down a 65-foot canyon wall and walked six miles before receiving help from a hiking family. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alive If there's one movie that proves the tenacity of the human spirit, it's Alive. See these mountains over here? There's no snow on them. Those mountains must be 50 miles away. You think you can walk 50 miles? If we have to, we will. Named after Pierce Paul Reed's non-fiction book of the same name, Alive details the tribulations of Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571. The plane crashes into the Andes Mountains, and the survivors spend the next 72 days stranded on the freezing mountainside. Realizing that they will perish on the barren mountain, the survivors decide to eat the frozen flesh of those who have already died. You're talking about eating people. Talking about eating meat so they don't die. It's a harrowing sequence in the film, and it's made even more horrifying owing to the fact that it actually happened. It was very hard. In the end, 16 of the 45 people on board were rescued. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.